polar opposites and conflict. That is what we are seeing in the world today, but we have a new moon in Virgo, and this is an opportunity for us to clean up that mental confusion, right? These are false oppositions. It doesn't matter who wins the election. It doesn't matter. We're going to have the same events. It doesn't make any difference who wins. The same things are going to unfold. They will have a different flavor. They will be dressed in different clothing, but they will basically be the same and have the same impact on you and me. So mental machinations, the rest of it is just mental machinery. And this new moon in Virgo is uncovering this type of machinery so that we can no longer live in a hall of mirrors. I mean, I don't know about you, but a lot of people are feeling pretty confused right now, at least if you have an ability to step back and see outside of your own perspective, your own point of view, right? If you're here and you're getting this message and you understand this, you're unique and you're rare. You're very special because most people can't do that. Most people can't perceive their own perception. And of course, the new moon in Virgo is actually very much about perceiving our own perception. Now, last week I talked about lies. Basically, the minute Mercury went direct, we started getting all these truth bombs coming out from RFK Jr., who is a designated character who is putting a lot of information out there that people in the alternative health community have known for decades, have been getting murdered for, for decades. None of this is new, right? None of this is earth shaking. It's earth shaking that it's coming from a Kennedy, right? And of course it's earth shaking if you've never heard any of these things before. But if you are already having some awareness, then your mind might be getting a little overwhelmed by the things that are going on. That is this new moon. And this new moon is giving us an opportunity to sit and examine our own minds and how our minds play tricks on us. That's what they do. They do that all the time. The truth is the brain, the mind, the thought process, we worship it in Western culture, we worship our minds, our abilities to solve problems and to get it figured out. And the truth is your mind is just a tool, just like a hammer or a nail. It's just another tool. And this is what a new moon in Virgo highlights. It highlights mental energy and the way we think about things and the way we analyze situations and information. And whether we believe the brain is our ultimate God, that we're gonna worship, you know, the science or whatever right? That's a religion. It's not anything else. It's actually a religion. What we are is something source. We are source energy. We are beaming energy into this world. And we are given mental, emotional, physical, spiritual bodies for a reason. They're all supposed to work together, all four of them. We're not supposed to just worship one of them. And that is one of the tricks on planet Earth. And this traps us into the lower, denser vibrational levels of the physical Earth. The eclipses, Mercury, these planetary energies keep us in a lower band of frequency, trapped on the physical level. When there's a spiritual and a higher level of experience, right? There's an emotional level. The emotions are our GPS. They're our, our emotional guidance system that teach us which direction is the right direction for us to go in, right? I personally get my soul fed by beauty, by creativity, right? So this place is fantastic. It's really gorgeous. Have you, did you see the ceiling? Can you see those copper pipes up there? The entire ceiling is made out of copper. This is a pretty spectacular and beautiful building. And it's, uh, it's a restored old bank, copper doors. I mean, it's really nice. It's really enjoyable. I enjoy this kind of thing. So I put myself in these environments because they, excuse me, get that straight. They help me. They help my sense of well-being. They help me feel that emotional GPS that's going to get me where I want to go. That's going to get me into my direction. So it's th this is also the benefit of, of meditation is to put your minds to sleep. In fact, meditation and the mind and dealing with the mind is one of the keys to mastery in this life. The mind can definitely be a trap. And it is often a trap. And I actually have a little story I'll share with you about when my son was very little, I used to take him to the pool, we'd go swimming. And there was uh, a, um, I don't know, probably a Down syndrome person who was there who would swim. And this, uh, this guy would swim and he would be there pretty much every day with his uh, caretaker. And this is a person who's brain doesn't function the way yours and mine does but this was a person who radiated joy just so much joy that it was always 
delightful to see him, okay? Because it didn't matter that his mental apparatus wasn't working. He would always just be, hi, how are you? Good to see you. And it was always just an experience of radiating joy and experiencing feelings of, you know, joy and source energy coming through this person. Now, this isn't the same as the joy that we're hearing about in the political campaign because that's marketing, right? That's not the same as the real thing. The real thing is a feeling, it's an experience, it's a, it's a being, in, and it doesn't mean that you can't have a brain if you are experiencing joy, but we're here to use both. We're here to experience both, and the brain is an implementation tool. It is not the answer giver. It doesn't know. It's not the way giver. It's not the, it's not the path finder, even though we think it is. The path finder is actually our emotional response to our experiences and our world around us. So if something doesn't feel good for us, then maybe we should go in a different direction, right? Maybe we should go somewhere else. And when we talk about the political scenario, it's all two different opposing things. And the opposition is always evil incarnate. That's essentially how both parties operate. And does that feel good? That doesn't feel so good to me. What feels good is going and doing the things on my path that bring me into alignment and take me to the places that I'm supposed to be. And that is what I'm focused on. And that is what I wish for you, is to focus on the things that are going to bring you a happy life. Having said that, I'll give you the cliche things that Mercury, I mean, that a new moon in Virgo is all about. And as we had Mercury just change directions because Mercury rules Virgo, this is why they're tied together. This is why it's all about the mind. The general things are health. Of course, I was fighting a flu. That's why my video is late. I had a bad cough for a couple of days, but I'm feeling much better now. But getting your health organized, getting your activity, your workouts, things like that, your eating, those are all Virgo related things. Perhaps there's a more of a desire to eat things that make your body feel better. The idea of diet, that's the mental idea of solving your health issues. What feels good? That's going to be what is the kind of food that makes your body feel good? That is what's going to last and what's going to work. We had a piece of salmon the other night. It was amazing, Mwah! delicious, fantastic, fresh, amazing Atlantic salmon. It was amazing, right? It's healthy, but it tasted incredible. It was a little of both. I mean, we bought the salmon because we were at the grocery store. My son's like, this big giant piece of salmon looks really good. I was like, yeah, it does, but it's kind of big. I have to cut it up. I, can I fit it in the freezer? There's a lot of salmon here. He, and I was sort of debating it. And I was like, you know what? It looks good. Let's get it. So we got it and it was delicious. Fantastic. That's what happens when you're following your intuition, your instincts, your what seems good at the moment. It wasn't just good for us and tasted delicious but it, it just sort of fell into place easily. So when I look at the chart for this week, I see a major highlighting of health and mm, viral type of issues, right? Things of that nature, health, organization, uh, getting ourselves eating the right things and feeling good, right? Feeling good on a physical level. I see that highlighted, but also philosophical conflicts as I spoke about earlier with the political scenario, philosophical issues. And our mission, whenever we have these kinds of oppositions going on in our world and in our lives, is to find the balance point, to find the place where things are not in conflict. That is the key to winning. That is how we unlock the puzzle box of confusion that we are surrounded by. But with the new moon happening at the roots of the chart down here in Virgo, it can be the birth of a new form of health routines for some of us. But I would just recommend that if it's not something that's about making us feel physically strong, feel physically healthy, feeling good. And if it's not about improving our health and our wellness on a emotional and a spiritual level, that we won't stick to it. It's gotta be stuff that we actually enjoy, that we like, find a exercise you like to do. My son loves skateboarding. He will skateboard for hours, right? He's in great shape because he does what he loves. That's what makes the difference, right? But also because this 
new moon is on the nadir at the roots of the chart, this is all emotional. It's all about our feelings and how we're feeling. So it's really important to be listening to, dealing with, and if we need to purge feelings, right? Because our feelings are being triggered. We're being triggered through our feelings. That is something that these political games are masters of. They're masters of pressing our buttons. It doesn't work if you are in charge of your buttons, if you're not letting your buttons be controlling your behavior. And that's really a key point here. So here's a few predictions based on what I'm seeing in this chart. And I have a lot more predictions in my Telegram group. I post them all the time. You can go back, you can see I predicted Biden had to be pulled out that a lot of what's going on right now. Anyway, you can go see me talking and giving you takes on what's happening right now. But here's key takeaway prediction. We've already seen it starting is that within the next week, we're going to see a big ramp up of some sort of you know, outbreak, several of them actually, I'm seeing that we have multiple things that are being vectors that are attacking our health. So the lockdowns, all these things are already being discussed. There's that. There's also the issues in Aurora, Colorado, not Aura, but Aurora, Colorado, which I know that place. Um, it's a, you know, the thing about Colorado is it's very nice. It's very very cu cookie cutter, very white bread. Everything looks exactly the same. All the homes are very much very controlled sort of codes for the building. So all these developments, all these home developments, you know, even apartment complex developments, they all look the same. Some of the older ones, it's a little different, but in general, even, you know, most of Colorado, my son made the observation, like you can't tell where a bad neighborhood is because it's right next to mixed in with the very expensive neighborhoods and they look the same. They have the same sort of architectural design. So everything sort of looks nice. It looks not great, not terrible, just nice, clean, and sort of up to a certain standard. And there's a certain amount of sort of control in the uh, Colorado mentality, right? So this area is a nice area and it's being taken over, right? It's being taken over. These, uh, these apartment complexes are being taken over by the gang, I don't know, something Aragua. So this Venezuelan gang. And now there's the story that the um, Hell's Angels are coming to the rescue and there's all this debunking and there's all this debate online, which is pretty fascinating and kind of distracting people. But my point here is my prediction is that obviously, and I've been predicting this now since long before this happened, that this is, the goal here is to start a civil war in the U.S., okay? So all of this doesn't matter when this or that or who or whatever. What matters is it's about a flashpoint, an ignition point for starting a civil war in this country. That's what they're trying to do. This is also, th these these attacks, these, these things that are going on in, in Colorado are going to happen to a whole bunch of other cities. And if you're in near a big city, you should be very wary that that can definitely come to your area but i will post more of a list for my members i'll talk a little bit about it on telegram but i'm going to post a list of what i'm seeing as some of the next cities there i mean i'm i'll tell you guys right now i'm seeing boston and i'm seeing um, definitely the east coast certainly la and new york are both very vulnerable although in new york it's going to be more like new york city is hard for them to do it too there's other places it's like um, other places it um and there's a uh, you know, these are, these are going to be some flashpoint things. It's not I, by um, other parts of New York. I don't know about upstate. So um, those are some that are coming to me right now, but I'll post a bigger list for members. Uh, just sit with it and give it some more thought to come up with a longer list. Right now, this is just what's coming off the top of my head. So, you know, you want to be aware that these things are going to be happening in multiple, multiple cities around the country. I'd also like to point out that Saturn is on the top of the chart here at the midheaven of the chart, uh, opposing the new moon in Virgo. So this, you know, is a lot of conflict. There's a lot of illusion, illusions that are coming out of official sources. It's also health issues, right? Just more of that health stuff. I just wanted to point out that opposition, but also we're getting essentially a T-square with Jupiter, which is extremely difficult. It's gonna be very, very challenging for a lot of people's plans and their ideas and their 
things, their thoughts of how things are supposed to go. Things may be going very different than most people are ex expecting or anticipating. And this T-square is creating a vortex of force over there in the seventh house, which is partnership, it's relationships. This is the missing element that is going to bring balance. It's also love, it's harmony within our relationships, finding a way to balance out our relationships with other people. Of course, the opposite is true in a lot of cases. There's a lot of conflict coming up out of these philosophical battles and dichotomies that we're being fed. So the balance point and also the critical point here about this new moon is going to be legal issues, things that are fair, things that have to do with justice. Whatever it takes to bring balance and justice to a situation, this could mean dealing with the legal system. This could mean uh, filing, you know, d documents related to issues, things on the credit report, things of these sort of official types of scenarios, anything that has like a legal element to it is pretty well um, favored to clean up and to straighten out and finding tools and techniques for straightening those things out. You can have a lot of success if you're trying to clean things up on the credit report, if you're trying to uh, sort out things related to a mortgage, even though on the general world stage, it looks pretty bad. There's ways to create solutions. If you're being proactive, if you're taking action, if you're finding that balance point in the middle of all of what's going on, there are solutions out there. Even though all the headlines, everything you're gonna see is like disaster, disaster, crisis, crisis. There are opportunities as well. You just have to dig a little deeper and not be stuck and caught up in the frenzy of that conflict that you're being shown. And with all of this, we have Venus. It won't be happening this week. It's gonna happen in another week or two. Uh, the alignment of Venus here with, it's gonna create a kite with, and which is also an opposition to Neptune. So there's gonna be a lot of change, a lot of opportunity for change. These can be big opportunities if you are looking for them. So pay attention. There may be great opportunities to pick up a business or a piece of land or property that you want. I'm not saying this is necessarily the best time to buy property since property values and prices are going to come down a lot further from where they are. But sometimes there's an opportunity in the middle of all this. And this is one of those times where we can look for those great opportunities and with businesses as well. One good thing that is happening with a lot of these stories of these big businesses going under is that people who are being laid off from these big businesses have to find a way to do something else. This is going to lead to a wave of small businesses. So we have been through a period of time where all this power, force, strength, commerce, all this money has been, and this business, the commerce, the actual trade, has been concentrated into the hands of a few very small, big corporations, right? Giant, giant corporations, like Starbucks everywhere, right? Now these companies are going under. A lot of them are shrinking because they're not able to handle this economy. And that's going to lead to solutions that are real solutions on the grassroots level coming from people building businesses. A lot of these people who are being laid off, a lot of these people who are losing their jobs are going to have to find other things to do. Some of them will be doing things that they wanted to do all along. Some of them will be starting real businesses. Real business, small business, individuals who are contributing something of value to society are the backbone of a strong economy in the US, right? They are the thing that will, this is the solution to all of the problems. So these people are actually going to be bringing their solutions to the marketplace. It's powerful, it's beautiful, it's great. If you have ideas, if you have solutions, if you have things that are um, going to bring uh, good things to people around you that are going to solve problems that they have. Well, guess what? You're going to have opportunities in these coming breakdown times because breakdown leads to opportunity. That's how it works. So, and then of course I have to talk about Mars here, which is uh, moving out of Gemini, moving out of the world of talking. I'll talk. I mean, there's more than talk going on, but he's definitely moving into the more emotional place, which is a little scary given what's going on in the world, uh, what's happening in the other parts of the world, there are big conflicts and emotion is the last thing you want when there's a big conflict like that. So this is, we're headed into a much more emotional, conflicting type of uh, cycle as, move, as Mars moves into Cancer. And that can be very um, knee-jerk, very reactive to problems. And it's not the most, again, you know, we want to balance between rationality and emotion. And that's the issue here. As Mars moves into Cancer this week, you can expect your emotions to be triggered. You can expect huge emotional appeals, uh, 
you know, campaign ads that are pulling on those heartstrings and things like that. This is marketing. I come out of Hollywood. I promise you these things are very well crafted in order to reach in, find your buttons and press them as hard as possible in order to get an emotional reaction from you. They're really good at it. These things are really good. They're really, and by the way, AI helps. AI is helping them to become even more manipulative and triggering with their um, marketing messages. So these things are really strong and really going on. All right, having said all that, this is about us being connected to our own emotions and taking ourselves out of that sort of mental, you know, battle and uh, trusting our, what feels good to us, not, not this kind of false stuff, this false story. But let's look at Bitcoin. Let's talk about the crypto charts. So what's happening here with Bitcoin? You can see last week where I showed you guys this little very tightly trading box here. And I asked you, does this look weak? Oh, actually back here I asked, does it look weak or does it look strong? And then it pumped up, but not that hard. And then it's, it's kind of broken all the way back down again, right? So, you know, we're still basically range bound. That's what I would call it. It's not really making any big moves up or down at the moment. So, you know, I, I'd still expect that we have not hit our lowest point that we still have lower points that we can hit. And um, I uh, do have timing and I do have a lot more specifics in the members area. Also other coins, if you want to know about other coins and I do Q and A calls every week, if you want to know about that, check out my site or a right.media, but I'll post a long-term prediction for Bitcoin, you know, whether what, you know, whether, uh, whether we will see $100,000 in the next 12 months. I'll post that in the Telegram group. So go ahead and sign up for my Telegram group in the description box below. And also go check out my website, AuraWrite.media, where you, you know, I give all the most in-depth information is to my members. So thank you guys. Have a beautiful week. Remember, connect to the joy, the feelings, the positivity, rather than getting caught into these mental machinations that are just designed to frustrate us and also trigger us right so that's that's my message for you and i wish you all health prosperity and well-being this week as i'm on the mend and i hope you are too talk to you guys later hope nobody else got that flu thing we'll talk to you later bye bye